Public economics is the study of government policy through the lens of economic efficiency and equity. At its most basic level, public economics provides a framework for thinking about whether or not the government should participate in economics markets and to what extent its role should be. In order to do so, microeconomic theory is utilized to assess whether the private market is likely to provide efficient outcomes in the absence of governmental interference. Inherently, this study involves the analysis of government taxation and expenditures. This subject encompasses a host of topics including market failures, externalities, and the creation and implementation of government policy. Public economics builds on the theory of welfare economics and is ultimately used as a tool to improve social welfare. Broad methods and topics include the theory and application of public finance, analysis and design of public policy, distributional effects of taxation and government expenditures, analysis of market failure and government failure. Emphasis is on analytical and scientific methods and normative ethical analysis, as distinguished from ideology. Examples of topics covered are tax incidents, optimal taxation, and the theory of public goods. Subject range. The Journal of Economic Literature classification codes are one way categorizing the range of economics subjects. There, public economics, one of 19 primary classifications, has eight categories. They are listed below with gel code links to corresponding available article preview links of the new Palgrave Dictionary of Economics online in, with similar footnote links for each respective subcategory if available. Gel H. Public Economics Gel H0 General Gel H1 Structure and Scope of Government Gel H2 Taxation, Subsidies, and Revenue Gel H3 Fiscal Policies and Behavior of Economic Agents Gel H4 Publicly Provided Goods Gel H5 National Government Expenditures and Related Policies Gel H6 National Budget, Deficit, and Debt Gel H7 State and Local Government, Intergovernmental Relations Gel H8 Miscellaneous Issues, Public Goods Public goods, or collective consumption goods, exhibit two properties, non-rivalry and non-excludability. Something is non-rivaled if one person's consumption of it does not deprive another person. A firework display is non-rivaled, since one person watching a firework display does not prevent another person from doing so. Something is non-excludable if its use cannot be limited to a certain group of people. Again, since one cannot prevent people from viewing a firework display it is non-excludable. Conceptually, another example of public good is the service that is provided by law enforcement organizations, such as sheriffs and police. Typically, cities and towns are served by only one police department, and the police department serves all of the people within its jurisdiction. Cost-benefit analysis while the origins of cost-benefit analysis can be traced back to Jules Dupuit's classic article on the measurement of the utility of public works, much of the subsequent scholarly development occurred in the United States and arose from the challenges of water resource development. In 1950, the U.S. Federal Interagency River Basin Committee's Subcommittee on Benefits and Costs published a report entitled Proposed Practices for Economic Analysis of River Basin Projects, which became noteworthy for bringing in the language of welfare economics. In 1958, Otto Eckstein published Water Resource Development, The Economics of Project Evaluation, and Roland McKean published his Efficiency in Government Through Systems Analysis, with emphasis on water resources development. The latter book is also considered a classic in the field of operations research. In subsequent years, several other important works appeared. Jack Hirschleifer, James D. Haven, and Jerome W. Milliman published a volume entitled Water Supply, Economics, Technology, and Policy, and a group of Harvard scholars including Robert Dorfman, Stephen Marglin, and others published Design of Water Resource Systems. 
New techniques for relating economic objectives, engineering analysis, and governmental planning. Taxation. Diamond Merley's Efficiency Theorem in 1971, Peter A. Diamond and James A. Merley's published a seminal paper which showed that even when lump sum taxation is not available, production efficiency is still desirable. This finding is known as the Diamond Merley's Efficiency Theorem, and it is widely credited with having modernized Ramsey's analysis by considering the problem of income distribution with the problem of raising revenue. Joseph E. Stiglitz and Partha Das Gupta have criticized this theorem as not being robust on the grounds that production efficiency will not necessarily be desirable if certain tax instruments cannot be used. Pigouvian tax is one of the achievements for which the great English economist A.C. Pigou is known, was his work on the divergences between marginal private costs and marginal social costs. In his book, The Economics of Welfare, Pigou describes how these divergences come about. One person A, in the course of rendering some service, for which payment is made, to a second person B, incidentally also renders services or disservices to other persons, of such a sort that payment cannot be extracted from the benefited parties or compensation enforced on behalf of the injured parties. In particular, Pigou is known for his advocacy of what are known as corrective taxes, or Piguvian taxes. It is plain that divergences between private and social net products of the kinds we have so far been considering cannot, like divergences due to tenancy laws, be mitigated by a modification of the contractual relation between any two contracting parties because the divergence arises out of a service or disservice to persons other than the contracting parties. It is, however, possible for the state, if it so chooses, to remove the divergence in any field by extraordinary encouragements or extraordinary restraints upon investments in that field. The most obvious forms which these encouragements and restraints may assume are, of course, those of bounties and taxes. Pigou describes as positive externalities, examples such as resources invested in private parks that improve the surrounding air, and scientific research from which discoveries of high practical utility often grow. Alternatively, he describes negative externalities, such as the factory that destroys a great part of the amenities of neighboring sites. In 1960, the economist Ronald H. Coase proposed an alternative scheme whereby negative externalities are dealt with through the appropriate assignment of property rights. This result is known as the Coase theorem.